Right. And yeah, hi everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, really nice uh, to having this uh, community call, the first of the year. So I hope you're all well and that you had a nice Christmas. Uh, as of last, um, the, our last community call, there was a request to have a demo of the admin tool, the Argos, how Argos can be used when we have administrator's rights. So this is why we, um, this is what we're going to do today. Uh, a walk through the admin. So let me, for that, without further ado, share my screen. Uh, oh, I have to share my whole screen. Okay, let's share my whole screen. Let's see what's So again, please feel free to um, to let me know either in the chat or by um, raising your hand. Let us know if you have any questions while I'm talking. <laughs> uh, this is also um, it's not only me presenting, but also for us to discuss, right? So I am here now in a test instance of Argos that we are using. And you're familiar with the first page of Argos, the landing page. Uh, you can see the features, you can see how it connects to EOS and so on. And you can log in um, by here uh, on top right, or if you click start your DMP, you will be uh, redirected to the same page that login redirects. So to the page of the tool. Right, so this is what I see when I'm inside. If I'm not logged in, I see I can see only, of course, I have a, a different options to, pro, to choose a provider and uh, log in with this provider, with the email that I have provided uh, to this provider. And we see the home, which if I click it, I see the public activity of, uh, I see the public activity of Argos, in Argos, of users in Argos. So here um, you see the usage statistics, like public DMPs, public data sets, grants, and organizations uh, involved in writing DMPs. I can see the latest activity in terms of everything inside uh, Argo, so all DMPs and all data set descriptions, or um, all the, the public ones, the public DMPs or the public data sets. Similarly, I can uh, browse uh, public DMPs and public data set descriptions from here, and some informative material uh, here I can find. But what I don't see is, uh, because I'm not logged in, what I don't see is my rights as a user. So if I log in, right, I logged in. I'm now able to see my own dashboard from the panel on the left-hand side. So my DMPs, DMPs that I created and the data sets that I uh, described in those DMPs. But because I'm an admin in this particular test instance that I'm showing you, uh, you also see some uh, further uh, features that I can use. So I can use, um, let's take it from, uh, from down uh, from, from the last one to the first one. So I can see the user guide editor where uh, we have, this is a user guide of Argos and I can uh, modify and save it make any changes and save it. I can see the language editor and I can uh, use it to localize the tool to a particular um, language. 
I can see the users. I'm not going to, to click it because then you will be able to see. Uh, so I can see the users of Argos and I can see who they are and promote some of them, grant them more uh, rights in terms of uh, accessing particular features of the tool. If I click the data set templates, I can see the data set templates that have been created in this instance, the templates, not the DMPs. So the data set templates are um, structured, uh, are structured um, information uh, that represent uh, and describe uh, the data sets or software or other outputs that um, researchers need to describe in their data management plans. And we have the DMP templates, which is a feature that we don't um, support currently. We have it since the software was launched, um, well, since the software was uh, uh, con in, in the conceptual uh, yet um, stage since 2016, but at the moment we're not um, operate DMP templates, uh, so you don't need to, to worry about that. What we want is the data set template as an admin to create our templates. What we see, well, what is called the DMP template, for example, uh, we call it data set template. And here I can find all the, again, all the templates that are created from different users um, that have template rights, template editing rights. And I can see the status. If they're finalized, if their drafts finalized, mean that they are now available for researchers to uh, have to, to select them. Uh, when they start writing their DMP. Draft means that they're not uh, ready yet to be um, given to the researchers. I can import here, I can import an XML of a template and immediately have it here in, the, in this um, list. For example, if I, let's say I want to import now I can have it here I just imported one and I can see it change it and modify it uh, let me maybe hide the floating perfect Right. And besides importing a template, I can create it from scratch. So I click create data set template, which is on the right, uh, on the right hand side, in the corner almost. And I see that the flow to create the template is um, split into three steps. So first step is to provide the general information about this template, which is the name of the template. Community called template, let's call it. The description of the template, so any information that can be useful to uh, other people to uh, understand which template it is. Right. The language of the template, in our case, it's English, for example. And I can also, uh, at, in this first stage, uh, per first step, share my template uh, with a colleague to create it together with them to help me in co-creating it. Um, please know that when you open it uh, and add an email, this email needs to be um, 
an Argos user, which means that this email should have um, should be in our user base. So, for example, if I'm sending it to George Kakaletris, my colleague, uh, who has never logged into Argos, I won't be able to find them because here we search the user base. Um, but if my colleague first logs in logs into Argos uh, and then I write and try to find their email here, then I will be able to find it and grant them template editor rights, which are different from the admin. But you can, uh, yes, I want to clarify this, that you can uh, create a template uh, either as being admins or as being template editors. So having access to one, two, or specific uh, templates that you are working on. So as an admin, I will be able to view, oops, I, won't, I, don't want to, I will be able to view all the templates created, but you as a template editor, for example, if I grant you access only the template editor, uh, in this DMP template, you will be able to view only this template and not the rest when you come uh, to work on the dataset template here. Right, now I'm not sharing it with someone, so let's move on to the second step. Um, here I can start creating my structure, um, either from the template outline, which is on the left-hand side, either from the center uh, by clicking creating the first chapter. So every, the structure, uh, well, in, in our goods has as follows. Um, every template has at least one chapter, and every chapter has at least one section, and every section has at least one question. Um, so we follow this order by, by chapter, section, question, and then every question can, ha can have different uh, inputs, um, which, which I will show you in a minute. But in order to, for you to be able to save it, to save a template, you should at the minimum have a chapter, a section and a question so that you are able to save it. If you create a chapter by itself like, uh, and try to save it, it won't uh, do so because it needs to have a chapter, section and question. Right, then I can click, let's click it from the middle and create my first chapter. Oops. First, let's call it first chapter. And now I can create a section either from here, from this button, or from here even, from the template outline side. Uh, I can add the section name. Um, let's call it first section. I can add a description for this section, maybe some informative material, that others, that the researchers will find useful. Um, materials, and I can add hyperlinks so that it's easier for them to, to redirect to the page where I want them to, for guidance, for example. And then I can add my question again, either from the template outline in, in, on the left, either from uh, the middle uh, section where I'm editing, or from this panel, uh, which has some uh, which has some tools for the questions. So I can let's click it from here now. And as you can see, as I'm creating the template, it, uh, I can see how it is at the moment, the whole structure from the template outline uh, on my left. So either um, I'm, I'm now working, uh, of course, on the first question, but I can see that this question is under the first section. And if I have more, I can then see all, all the rest questions. Um, 
let's see that this question uh, is about uh, the data. So I give it a name. I again, I can have a description to facilitate understanding and provide more guidance of how I want this question to be answered. I can select, I can make it required, but first I have to select and I, I, I define what type of question I want this to be. So as you can see, at the moment I have nothing, but if I select this question to get input as a free text, now this box uh, opens. So I can preview also how the question is, form, is formed while I'm doing it. <clears throat> and maybe before uh, going into uh, some more, let's say, complex examples, let me show you first what are the different inputs that this uh, that, that Argo supports. So, for example, this input is about um, long text. Um, yeah, long text basically. So, text that has many characters uh, in the form of paragraphs. Then we have the free text, which is about less supports less characters. So simple answers, uh, you know, uh, that do not need more, more justification or modification um, can have this free text option. And read text area is when it comes with this editor where you can um, customize how the answer looks like. So create lists of things. like this and um, I don't know maybe um, underline text right so you can do <clears throat> even add links if you want to point to an, a specific resource and all of that Another input that Argo supports is uploads. For example, if you want a, a question or a particular area of the template to have um, an image, people can upload it, researchers can upload it. So you can use this feature, the, uh, the upload feature. And it works like this. Then I can have a Boolean, which is the yes or no for simple questions. I can have a radio box, which is a list of things, but uh, displayed as buttons as, as it was in the yes or no uh, before. So option one and option two. The label here is what the researchers will view when they uh, follow the, uh, when they open the template and start uh, adding content in it. The value here is what they will see when they export the PDF. So the label might be different from the value. So here I might say something to quickly um, to, 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 to quickly um, uh, give the information to researchers. But here I might explain things more. And so when they click it, when they select A, for example, and they export the, this uh, question, more things, what you, we have added in the value will be uh, the answer, the, their answer. Um, 
then I can have the same select, but as a list, as a drop down menu, sorry. And again, I can option A, option B, I can create the options that I want. Right. And as you can see, now it's a list of things that I can choose from. But now I can choose only one. If I want to choose more than one, then I click this multiple selection, which is found here. And if you see, now this has changed and the drop down menu opens and I can choose more than one. And this is possible to many other inputs to have multiple selection of things especially also in the APIs that we provide, where the list you don't define, but it comes um, as, it is, as, the, as it is from the source that we harvest. Uh, in each question, I forgot to mention that we have an input placeholder text to make it easier for um, someone of the researchers that are writing the data management plan to understand um, what to add in this box, for example. Here I, I could have the word select and it appears. Uh, and when I click it, it disappears. It's just to um, give more emphasis maybe on the action um, for this field. I can have it required if I want to by clicking this button. And uh, let me finish with the with different inputs, and I can I can let you know about the, the rest. We can have an we can have a checkbox. Maybe if you to use it as we want, there are unlimited ways of how we can use all of these those inputs. Actually, there's not a one way that fits all. Um, so, for example, we can have it uh, to hide other questions when it's clicked or not. Uh, and so on. We can have a date picker, right? To set the time, maybe for embargoes. We can have um, currency to find. I don't know when we identify the when we have to define the costs for data management. Maybe uh, we need to also provide the currency. And we also have a list of configured APIs already from uh, sources uh, that you can use inside the template. And this is about metadata from the uh, RDA Metadata Center Catalog, a uh, directory, sorry. The services from uh, EOSC, the researchers from ORCID, the organizations from OpenAir, which harvests ROAR, GREED, uh, National, provi national providers, the repositories. So it harvests all those sources and they duplicate them and provides the organization uh, through this uh, common, this one API. Um, data sets, external data sets, which are the data sets that you can find in explore.openair.eu. So millions of data sets uh, that you can find in this API and use it in the template. We use it to make the links uh, of the DMP to the data set that it, uh, the data sets that are described in the DMP. And then we also uh, have an API for the data repositories to maybe specify the data repositories um, that the data sets will be preserved. Publication repositories for uh, making the links to the publications, journals. Uh, to make the links to the peer-reviewed journals um, for the publications, taxonomies, uh, licenses, and all of these are from the uh, Open API publications. Uh, again, millions of publications as you can find them now and browse them from explore.openair.eu. And you can also configure your own by using the other uh, function. So the, with using the other, you can customize your own 
uh, API if you have a source that you want to um, include in the template. You can add it and actually not only one, you can add many. So at the end, this um, field will give you the content from all the APIs that you have configured. The downside is that uh, if you use many sources and there are duplicates, so there are things that each source has, um, uh, so, so five entries that one source has uh, like the other and so on, you will find all those duplicates or uh, as many times as they appear uh, here. So that's the downside. They won't appear as one entry, they will appear as many entries because it will be found in the many APIs that you will have configured. Right. Um, and then you have the, once we, let's say, let's go back, let's say that I'm creating now a simple um, question that is a free text, um, requires a free text as an answer. I can make it required, of course. Let's make it, I can, every time that I'm creating a new input or a question, I can check uh, and map it to the property and the entity uh, of the DMP common standard, the standard that is used for DMP's interoperability. And these are from that standard, these uh, uh, entries here. So for example, if I am in metadata, I can specify uh, which one of the three I want so that uh, at the end, the template is machine actionable. The template that I'm creating, and it's not just a um, simple uh, XML, for example. Right, let me, so the question about metadata. Uh, let me choose the metadata then, since this is a question about metadata. Good. So I have chosen the metadata API. It's a question about meta, uh, metadata. I have uh, mapped it to the RDA common standard. I can uh, choose the multi autocomplete, the, the multiple uh, selection so that I can select more than one metadata standards if I want to. And I could, I could also add, oops, I could also add the uh, name. Uh, select the name of the placeholder, which will be, which will be select the date. And as you see in the toolbox of, for the for it question, we have the add question um, function. We have the clone function. So I can this can clone it as I did it now, as I have it now and change things. For example, maybe I want the same, but without being multiple. So I can have it and change it. And I can delete it also. But there's a warning uh, so that I, before I proceed, uh, I'm warned, I, I've been warned to um, check if I want to. I can create uh, dependent questions. So let me create one that is um, So now I have, if you see a question about metadata, which is a, with an API and I have a free text. Let me also create one that is a yes or no. So I have a metadata API, free text, and yes or no. Let's say that I want this, this yes or no 
to be dependent to to uh, another question. So when I click yes, something happens. First of all, I cannot do it now because as you see, there's no other question following yes or no. So if I click yes or no, nothing will. Um, I, I cannot have it as conditional because there's no content for me to work on what I want to make conditional. If I want to change the order, which I'm going to do now, I can simply grab it, grab the, the question that I want from here, from the outline, from the left-hand side, and move it where I want to. Okay, now I moved it to be the first in this section. So now I can make it conditional. I can say, if yes, please open the metadata question, uh, or the free text, let's say the free text. So I click make conditional, and if value is yes, then show me the free text. And if I want to see how this looks like, I go to the third, uh, let's save it actually. I go to the third step, and here I can see the template as I have created it until now. And as the researchers will view it, when they start writing the data management plan, if they select it, this particular template. So here we see on the yes, the free text opens. On the no, it's only the, the, the rest that I had created. So it works. I can go back, make any other changes that I want, create more chapters. Let's create a chapter. A table. We can also have tables. And I will show you how to create one. So when I want to create a table, I have to have all in all, I have to know first of all how many columns I want in this table. Um, and what each column will be. Let's say I want to create a table to easily um, add all the data sets uh, for a particular collection that I'm describing here, uh, data collection that I'm describing here. Uh, data, data set information. Let's say that I want to know the name of the data set. So I will choose the free text so that they write it, the researchers write it. And I have to specify the placeholder um, name. And to add more inputs, I click add input from here. Let's say that I want the data, the, this table to also have um, a date picker. So let's say that this is the date. See, each input goes below the next, and each input comes also with required. So the one input might be required, but the other might not. So now I have a question about data sets that has a name and a date, and maybe the date is required. Let's make it required. And the name is not. You can also play around with that. And um, let's also say that what more do I want? Let's add another input. I also want to know the metadata of this data set. Okay. Uh, let's add a placeholder. Metadata. And also the licenses, maybe. Uh, it's below licenses, yes. Let's make it also uh, mandatory. So as we see it now, it's not a table, of course, it's just a list of inputs. If I want to make it a table, I click the multiplicity from here, which is next to these three dots, 
I, I select this. I go up. I find this, um, this area where it says multiplicity min, multiplicity max. So here, if I'm working on a table, that means how many rows I want um, the table to have, up to how many. Let's say I want to have up to 10 rows. I click view items in tables, so I select it from here. And if I scroll now and I go back to the preview, I see that I have my table, which is machine actionable because each input is, is uh, let's say, date picker can be date. Each input is linked to the DMP common standard um, property. So the whole table is not just a table, but it's also almost inactionable, which is what we wanted. We didn't, we didn't want to miss this um, uh, feature. And if I go, let's save it. If I go now in the preview to test how the researchers will view it, let's again see. Click yes, the free text opens. Select metadata, I have to do it because now it's mandatory. Great, and I can select more than one. Let's select more than one. Um, and if I want to add content in the table, I click this pencil. I add the name of the data set. I click the date. I don't know, maybe of production of data set. I, I don't know how we, we didn't define how we want to use it for this example. I can select the metadata for this data set and the license. Right, maybe let's search it also. And I can save it. And I can add another row edit it by clicking the pencil, adding a new name. And so on, choose another date or maybe no, um, add the metadata and the license and save. Okay, these changes are not saved. This is for us to, to check actually if it works. And once I'm ready, I can finalize it. And now I can find it here. It's the first on my list because it's the last one that I have worked on. So the, the order follows a chronological, uh, it's actually order. Uh, so it goes with the latest that you have edited. I can see it again change it, make any changes and update it and close it. And if I go, if I enter the tool now as uh, a researcher, so not as an admin, I can start my DMP. And you can specify the funder. Let's say European Commission. And if I go to dataset info, I will be able to find uh, the one that we just created. There it is, community template, save and add. And here it is, first chapter and chapter about the table. And that was it. Um, do we have any questions about the admin? Oh, I see the chat. Uh, many things are happening. Uh, let me see, let me see. Yes, we have, and also in the meeting notes we have. If, if you prefer, I, I can share my screen with the questions. Yes, please do, please do. And you can you. go through. Okay.
Let me zoom in a bit. Okay, thank you so much. So, uh, from Johanna. Hi, Ellie, thank you for this walkthrough. However, it seems I cannot see the options you're currently discussing in my own Argos account. Yes, because you don't have admin rights or template editors rights. You don't have any rights to do that. Uh, you, you can have uh, if you want, but you need to contact us. So, at argos, argos.opener.eu, just send us an email uh explaining why you will need them and uh, we can um we can give you access uh karina becker do you address then how can i get admin rights for argos trying to set up my own instance uh no um again to we can we can give template either admin rights or template the rights to you in one of our test instances to create your template for the institution. That's something that we do. Uh, but to connect, for example, the whole Argos into your own institutional data services uh, to have automations uh, and uh, exchange information, have automations with them, uh, with DMPs, then it's uh, another discussion. But in any case, please contact us at argos.opener.eu. Um, Roman, hi Roman. Do you have any tag value for sensitiveness and other normalized labels? Um, we have um, tags as they are in the DMP common standard. So I think there is one for sensitive, yes, there is one for sensitive data, uh, but there's only one. Um, if yes, is there any option to import vocabulary list and hierarchy in the table, in the template? I've seen that at the end, but how is it working? Can you show how to manage essential minimum required metadata if you have several participants entering data set descriptions, how to check if all recommended parts are in finally? Uh, yes, there so are sorry, so many questions. Of questions. Yes, so many questions. <laughs> so all in the same time, I think it's not possible, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think the main one is how, how, how to how to manage uh, uh, things when they are coming from several systems, several users that, and we want that they use preferred uh, vocabularies. That will be the the case in the Isidore context, as you know. Uh, for yes. people that are here, Isidore is a big project with 154 partners. And lots of core projects and uh, something like two or three hundred projects that arrive. We have to manage all data for projects on uh, at least met essential metadata in a kind of umbrella yes. uh, umbrella data management plan. So I'm here for that. <laughs> Okay, but we can have, yes, we can, as, as I showed, we, we can configure the sources that you want in the template. So the vocabularies, for example, that you want. Um, and the template, yes, can be used for um, the, the researchers, if when they get a template, can um, work, collaborate on one template um if this is also part of the question because you mentioned many people working on yeah the idea is that lots of researchers will really, really use the easy door access management system to manage all their their content related to the project the metadata that describe their project and also the access to the data to the project so kind of uh minimum required uh metadata sets for their data uh, from the project that they have uh, uh, done. So uh, how to do that if we want a, a, not a, a bad participation from project manager? Uh, I think that it could be great to relocate the template that is formalized and construct on your uh, open air Argos uh, interface to distance websites, not only the Isidore website, but also possibly, uh, you know, Arise websites, if uh, it's yes, possible, I see just what to, you... 
to 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 reach more 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 uh, attendance and more more uh -huh. participation. But I mean know that it's not perhaps possible today, but it could be a, a good no, no. Of, but, but yes, thank you, thank you for this. Yes, that would be a good idea, actually. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and the other is the other question is by you as well. I'd like to know how to manage a community of project managers in Argos. Yes, okay, it's the same. Okay. Um, yeah, we can. Um, we can think about it. Um, yeah, thank you for raising this up. Uh, Julia uh, Caldoni. Hi, Ellie. Thank you so much for this demo. Super interesting. I was wondering, does the upload command allow the researcher to upload not only images, but maybe also a table? Uh, in case, how would appear in the finalized DMP? Yes, so first question. The upload allows, yes, that if we have different um, formats that uh, you can you can select which ones you want to allow. Um, so for example, if you select that the up upload um, is only for PNG for, uh, formatted files, then it will discard all the rest. It won't recognize them as an upload. So um, they, it, it will work only with the PNGs. Uh, but we have, yes, it works for images, uh, PDFs, uh, documents, and, um, and Excel, I think, is uh, in the suit of files uh, that we have for the upload. But as you mentioned, there are some, um, um, yeah, there are some issues, for example, with the images, it works perfectly fine. It is centralized, it, it finds its way inside the PDF. But with the uh, more, the extra documents, let's say, that are, are introduced with an upload, for example, if it's a PDF or if it's a, an XML, uh, sorry, um, an XLS, an Excel, uh, that means it goes as an attachment. Uh, it doesn't go as an upload inside the, the DMP. Um, and second is, is XML the only format allowed to upload a data set template? Thank you. Yes, at the moment it's the only format, uh, but we, uh, we can consider more if we have a good use case and demand over that use case so more than one organizations want to have it at some Thank you. Uh, Roman, hi, thank you for this demo. Is there a record available for Isidore? No, we don't have from Isidore, um, but we could create something. Um, let's, let's further discuss this, Roman. Uh, Juan Corrales, it would be possible to export the DMP in the template language. I mean, export the DMP in Spanish when the template was in Spanish, for example. Yes. Uh, and thank uh, Hi, Juan. <laughs> and um, yes, we are um, looking at it at the moment because uh, I think that it wasn't like this always. I think it used to be in Spanish what you have marked here, for example. So we are we are looking at it at the moment, and we will get back to you on that. Oh, is that it? Yes. Okay. Let me see. Okay. Yes. Um, Again, if you want to create a template, Romana will contact you uh, to, because this is linked to other things as well that we're doing. Um, but I don't remember who was. Please contact us if you want to create your own template. Uh, Johanna and uh, I guess Karina.
Uh, any other questions? If there is time, just, just a, a kind of a loop on, on what, uh, how it is working when you uh, import a kind of vocabulary value uh, because there are, there are two possible issues. For instance, the first one is when you import the value and the value will be changed uh, after uh, because uh, it will be precise, more precise in the vocabulary. It's when we, you have a, a live vocabulary. Normally, in the vocabulary, there is a, a correspondence that, that is uh, uh, ensured, but uh, it's not always the case. So do you have a date? For for the for, for the, the vocabulary value that is uh, put in 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 the DMP, and the second one is when you have a four zero four issue uh, that arrive many times in lots of vocabularies. Uh, how can we manage that? Uh, is there something like an alert or something like that that shows that it's not working anymore? Uh, no, uh, if it doesn't work, it will. Um, we have um, um, a text, an uh, instructive text that says that uh, we, 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 we don't have content for this or something like this. But maybe I'm not the person to answer this particular question. George, if you're still with us and you can hear us, maybe you, you can take up this question uh, for the vocabularies and how they are configured in the Argos. Uh, there are, uh, hello. Uh, I don't know if I, will, I respond exactly on the spot, but there are some ways to configure if I, um, vocabularies in Argos. One is to, to list the terms inside uh, when it is a small list to list them there, but the other, I, I assume you don't imply that kind of vocabularies, but you imply larger vocabularies that can be consumed from uh, external providers. Uh, in that case, we need to provide the, the vocabulary to be supplied in a, in a simple form uh, via an HTTP API, HTTPS endpoint, not API. And uh, that uh, vocabulary we can uh, then apply filtering, et cetera, so that you can embed it inside your uh, the questions of your uh, of your uh, data management plan template. Uh, the the specification is very simple. It's the simplest thing that you one could do to supply a list of terms through uh, HTTP. But I guess if I go further on that, it would be too technical. But it is very simple to do if you can provide them like that. Thank you, George. I think that covered <laughs> Roman's question. Right. Uh, before we leave, uh, we're sharp in the hour. Uh, maybe you want, because we have, of course, many things that we would like to discuss uh, in the next community calls, but uh, we can prioritize based on your uh, needs as well. So maybe if it is something specific that you would like to discuss or see from us, please let us know, like as this one, as admins uh, today, that was uh, suggested by you. Okay. Then if not, um, again, we have some things in mind, so I will share them with you. Um, Possibly we'll show a new template next time uh, that we have, but you will uh, learn more um, when you um, when you register for the next call. So yeah, thank you very much, everyone. Really nice uh, seeing you or talking to you, and see you next time in a month. Take care.